Well, there's that <laughs> extra distance that you are looking for right off the bat. Exactly what I wanted there. Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Today I have Jackie Johnson back. She has previously done some videos with us in the past uh, comparing women's uh, fittings to men's fittings. So Jackie, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, I'm thrilled to be here and be able to help you guys out. Yeah, I'm excited to have you here for good reason because a lot of testing when I'm testing clubs, you know, you notice my club speed is fairly high. So we're gonna do a club comparison today comparing the Ping G425 irons and the Ping G710 irons. So I usually don't quite fit into those clubs, but I have tested them because my swing is pretty repetitive. Jackie's swing is relatively repetitive as well, so I'm excited to test with a slower swing speed because Jackie's club speed is usually around about hovering just a little over 70 miles an hour with her 7 iron. So Jackie, tell me how far you normally play your 7 iron and what you currently play. Yeah, I currently play the 716 AP2s. Usually that 7 iron is going to go anywhere from 130 to 135. Um, so definitely could use a little bit more distance uh, in my irons. Would like to be more of the you know 140, 145 range. Okay, yeah, and so the, the G710 and the G425, they are going to be a little bit more forgiving. They're also going to be a little bit more stronger lofted than the AP2s. The AP2 loft is about 34 degrees, while the loft on the G710 is 29 and a half, and the loft on the G425 is 30 degrees. So for today's test, we're going to hit, we'll probably hit four shots initially. We'll come back and hit four more shots with each one. So eight shots total with each club. We're going to compare the looks. We're going to talk, talk about the numbers. And we're going to talk about the, just kind of the differences between both models here too. So let's hit some shots and get after it. Okay, Jackie, first up we've got the Ping G710 irons. And I believe I've got the Ulta CB Slate regular golf shaft in there. That weighs around about 55 grams. Now you're playing a golf shaft... 65 gram regular, correct? Correct, yep. Yep, so it's gonna be pretty similar with regards to testing. Let's start off at four shots with this one, hit four shots with the G425. We'll talk about the, the differences in look and feel, and then we'll hit four more shots with each club. Sounds good. Well, there's that extra distance that you are <laughs> looking for right off the bat, 146 total. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted there. Okay, so Jackie, you've hit four shots with both models initially. So first, let's talk about the look comparison comparing the two models. So I put the both heads on a couple of different shafts for you to kind of look at there. Can you notice any difference between the two of them? Um, I mean, obviously the G710 is black versus the G425 is, you know, more of a chrome. And I, I think, like, overall, they, they both look good, but... Um, for me, the G710 looks a little bit more, like, I feel more confident with it. I don't know if it's just the black and the appealing um, color to that, but, you know, when you're just laying them, you know, on the ground, there's not a whole lot of difference, like, in terms of that I can see from, like, offset or anything, but uh, top line's pretty similar and all that. I mean, look is similar besides the color, so... Yeah, the, the G710, it will just have a little bit more offset on it. Now, mm -hmm. with it being that black club head, it really does settle down with regards to club head size. Now, it is a, it is a little bit larger profile, mm -hmm. but black makes people look sleeker. It makes clubs look sleeker. So it definitely makes it a very look, good-looking golf club to kind of look down at. Yeah, for sure. Like, compared to, you know, other models that are in the same category, I'd say... Yeah, definitely it looks a little bit bigger, but it's hard to tell from the black. Yeah, and you touched on the weight a little bit. You had a question with regards to, is one feel lighter or one feel heavier? Yeah. Yeah, the G425 felt like heavier versus the G710, and 
you know, you waited and it was barely anything, anything of a difference. So that was kind of interesting, um, just that I felt like the G425 was heavier than the G710. Yeah, and we were hitting both of the exact same golf shaft, same length. Um, so it's, it was kind of interesting that basically you're separated by half a gram. It was, right. it was nothing to really talk about with regards to kind of the difference. But I, once again, the, the look can be perceiving a little, a little bit there as well. Yeah. Um, let's just talk numbers really, really briefly before we hit four more and really kind of validate the numbers. But kind of interesting, good tester here. I appreciate you swinging club speed pretty similar here. Uh, you'll notice the G710, you was picking up about half a mile an hour more club speed. Now that could be related to the fact you felt like it, it was a little bit lighter, um, but it's kind of interesting that you were swinging it just a little bit, little bit faster there. Uh, it's kind of interesting, even though you were swinging the G710, a little bit faster, you actually got a little bit more ball speed with the G425. So I know it's only four shots right off the bat, so it's just kind of interesting thing that you hit the G425 with a little bit more ball speed with a little bit less club speed there. Uh, it's kind of interesting if you look at the spin rate, the G425 did spin more than the G710, and that's a little bit to do with the loft difference. There's a half a degree loft difference, the G710 29 and a half, and the G425 is 30, but it's kind of interesting how it was spinning about 600 RPMs. Now we're going to hit four more just to see if that, those numbers get closer or not. But kind of interesting because you were hitting the G710 just a little bit lower that it was, and lower and spinning a little bit more. Just a little bit shorter in carry, rolling out a little bit more there too. So when you talk about kind of landing angle and height, with your club speed around about 72 miles an hour, you would suggest that for a higher trajectory, you would want to try and get that landing angle around about 40 degrees, so it would give you higher stopping power. And Ping has a nice chart when, to fit to club speed, essentially. A lot of times I'll bring up that 45 degree mark, but that's because I swing faster. So initially, right off the bat, we can, we can talk about the numbers. So far, you can see G425 just a little bit smaller dispersion circle, but uh, we've got some more shots to hit. Maybe a little right. That was pretty good. Well. Okay, so Jackie, you had like one miss hit in here with each one. So we've got this one with the G425 that was just a little bit low left. And then you've got one here that's just a little bit shorter than everything else with the G710. That one flew a little bit. Uh, a little bit lower. So let's kind of talk about the numbers and compare the differences between the two models. So first thing, if we look at the G425, you'll notice that your club speed was about one mile an hour less with regards to club speed than the G710. Same golf shaft, we measured kind of the weight of the heads and you still, it seems like the G710 felt a little lighter, but you, you notice you're picking up a little bit more club speed. Mm -hmm. but the measurements kind of show that it wasn't, so that was kind of interesting. Um, but it's you know, important to pay attention a little bit more to ball speed. So I always like to kind of focus on ball speed and fittings because that's, that's where the money's at. The higher the ball speed, the further the ball is usually going to go. Um, so you notice G425, 98.2, G710, 96.8. Now I want to ask you, because I know you, you said you felt like you didn't quite hit the G710 as well on a few of those swings. Mm -hmm. Is that accurate? Yeah, I felt like I was hitting it like more towards the bottom of the club than I was G425. I mean, felt pretty solid, like most of those swings. So G710, I mean, when I hit the G710 well, it felt good. Um, but consistency definitely was a little bit better with feel with the G425 as I went on. Yeah, and I think that just showcases the level of forgiveness you get out of the G710. You're not going to hit it perfect every single time but you will notice how it still kind of did the same thing every right. single time, which is definitely important. So if we look at, for example, your carry distance, notice this plus or minus number. So plus or minus 3.5 was a little bit more consistent than say the G425 at plus or minus 5.1. So if you miss it, so we're kind of doing the same thing, which is definitely kind of important. And that just shows the level of forgiveness though a little bit larger profile. Um, but kind of touching back on other numbers, so if you look at the spin rate, the G425 was still spinning a little bit more than the G710, uh, and it was also consistently spinning a little bit more as well, if you look at the plus or minus number there. Uh, so that's just showcasing a little bit of loft, 
Um, the G425 does have 30 degrees of loft on it, while the G710 has 29.5 degrees of loft on it. Um, it's interesting because I would have expected the G710 to carry further, knowing that it's got it's slightly stronger lofted. Mm -hmm. um, but the G425, it's a, it's a hot club. I mean, they're, the technology behind the, the, the face um, to generate higher ball speeds on a more traditional lofted club per se, there's a lot of other game improvement irons out there that have 26, 27 degrees loft on the seven iron. Loft on this guy is 30 degrees, so it's not as strong a lofted, but they find other ways to generate the distance, which is kind of important. And you mentioned 135 total was what you've been hitting your current seven iron. Yeah. We notice with both of these here, you two, you picked up basically about one club in distance. They were both going total about 148. Yeah, which is definitely what I would expect out of you know both of these clubs, to be honest. So. Uh, one thing I kind of touched on too with uh, with Ping, they have this this fitting kind of manual for irons based on your club speed. They have like a high stopping power, a moderate stopping power, and lowest lowest stopping power. With your club speed kind of like 70 to, eight, 70 to 80, if you have that stopping power, that landing angle above 40 degrees, you have a better chance to stop the ball on the green. Um, which we'll notice here with the G425, it was just a little bit over 40. We'll notice the G710 was just a little, little bit under uh, 39 there too. But mm -hmm. I mean, both were exceptionally good clubs. You'll notice a little bit higher ball flight with the G425. Um, you did have three shots here with the G425, we look over on the right side. They did carry further than any other shot, which is, definitely kind of stands out to me there. There's a couple a little bit shorter. Um, but yeah, I'd say your, your really good shots with the G425 probably go a little bit further. Mm -hmm. The consistency you got out of the G710 with regards to carry distance consistency, so your east to west dispersion. So left to right on this, uh, on this white circle was maybe just a little, little bit tighter there. But then you've got some shots up there, for example, this one that, you know, carried pretty far. I think that one, if you look here, it carried one, I think that was 140, 143 carry going 156. And that thing flew pretty high. That was about 70 feet in the air there too. So, yeah, you, pretty, pretty interesting differences between the two of them. If you were going to play one of these two irons, does there, was there one that presented a little bit more confidence to you, or one that felt maybe just a little bit better at all? I mean, like I said before, with the G425, it was, it felt a little bit smoother, like off the face, um, which kind of tells like I was hitting it, you know, a little bit higher, so that you know, a little bit more hot on that end, um, you know. But overall, like not a whole lot of differences uh, besides the look. Uh, I, I felt at the beginning I felt more confident with the G710, but I think as I progress, like either one would probably be good. I, I think the feel of the G425 is definitely, as I started hitting more, was was better. Um, I felt like I was hitting it a little bit more solid than the G710, but the G710 still performed relatively the same. Yeah, I mean, both of these irons are exceptionally good op options for those players with a little bit slower club speed. We notice you're around about just a little bit over 70, but if you have a player that even starts hovering underneath that 70 mark, you know, they're designed to get the ball up in the air. The way the clubs are designed, the center of gravity, even though the loft may be slightly stronger, still ball's still going to fly nice and high and give you that stopping power, which is really important there too. So I think this is a great test comparing two really great irons by Ping. The G425 has just recently come out, and the G710's been out for a little bit longer. Uh, both great options. Um, Jackie, thanks so much for coming on today and hitting some shots and showcasing. You know, a lot of, a lot of our viewers have been asking for club speed testing for a player, from a player that's got a little bit less club speed. I think this is going to be great for us going forward, and I really appreciate you for coming on. Yeah, you bet. And for all you golfers watching today's video, keep in mind we do do club fittings at Second Swing in stores and also online. You can work with our sales associates in the stores or give us a phone call or even an online sales consultation to help you fit into irons that will suit your game. The G425 irons, the G710 irons are great options, but there's plenty of other great options out there to test. So come on in to Second Swing. Also, don't forget to uh, bring your trades in. We do take trades to help offset the prices on your new irons. Thanks for watching.